Hey guys, good evening. How are we doing? I haven't been live for a while, so I thought I would and just speak to you. I did a bit yesterday that I want to talk about. Um, and it's basically on the basically how to get your coaching business in front of the right people, how to solve the issues for the people, and how to establish your business as the go to expert. And this is basically what everybody wants for their coaching business. People want to be the go to expert, they want people with issues that you solve to come to you and buy your programs or hire your coaching services. Now, I know a lot of coaches have issues where they're struggling to get clients and they're struggling to get people to come and buy their services. Uh, you know, you could be a new coach in business, but you're struggling to find the right people to listen to your messages. You know, you feel like you're, you're creating these posts on social media and they're just falling on deaf ears. Uh, or you think you've got a great idea. Um, it's an idea that, in your opinion, is so good that it helps so many people out. Uh, but yeah, you your diary still isn't booked up with people you know, trying to get your coaching services and um, booking coaching calls with you. Or maybe you've even have done a bit of research and you found a coaching program. So many people that have told you it would be beneficial. Uh, maybe it's an issue that you've actually been through yourself and yet you're still having a struggling or you're st still struggling to get people to buy your coaching programs or hire your coaching services. Now, the solution to all these problems and ultimately what will get your business in front of the right people, it will find the right clients for your needs um, and it will establish your business as the go-to experts eventually is marketing. Now, marketing is something that I struggled with for a long, long time and may, mainly because I really didn't know what I was doing um, I neglected it. I never put the effort into it. I didn't enjoy it. I found it boring and to a certain extent, I still do. However, for me, um, marketing is a key part of what I do as a service. So, you know, if I build a website for somebody, that website has to have a, uh, it has to have a function. It has to convert visitors to clients. It, that, that's what the website's there for. It's got an, it's, the whole point of the website is to give people enough information uh, to sell um, coaching services or coaching programs to clients. And part of that as well is to get leads to it. So depending how you market yourself really depends on how I would de design a website for you if I was doing it for you. Um, so my, when I deliver a website, I do a lot of details on marketing um, and I build the website to suit somebody's marketing strategy. And if nobody's got a marketing strategy, then I want to help them out to understand marketing a little bit better. Now you might wonder why marketing is really essential to coaching uh, coaching businesses. It's not just coaching businesses. It's actually more, um, it's essential to most businesses, to be honest. A marketing-led business approach will ensure that your coaching services are aimed at providing solutions to issues that people have. In other words, your business is providing real value to people's lives from their perspective, not your perspective, their perspective. Providing coaching services and programs that you think are useful may not actually be useful to the people uh, to other people. And that's a bit harsh, but I've been there as well. I thought I've had a great idea for a business or um, a freebie or a service or something like that. Um, built it, spent time building it and put it out there. And people don't actually want it. They're not really that interested in it. Uh, but if you're trying to push a coaching program onto clients and convincing them they need it, uh, it can be an expensive and time consuming fight and results may not be great too as the clients may find the program irrelevant and disappointing. So it's not good for your business. You know, it's in time consuming, expensive, um, but you're really not going to get the results that you really want from your coaching business. If you take a marketing led approach, um, then one of the first steps you'll do is you'll actually carry out market research to find out what the real issues uh, that your clients or your potential clients actually have in their lives. So you can ask questions, things like, you know, what is taking up their time or what is sapping their energy or really what is stopping them moving forward to, uh, to reach the goals that they want to achieve. 
And basically, you could ask this question, but what did he wish could be fixed or improved in their lives uh, with a magic wand if it existed? And by asking questions like this and narrowing down exactly what clients struggle with, you'll have a better idea of what solutions to provide in your coaching program or your coaching services. And when you know that your coaching program or coaching services provide the right solutions for the for your clients needs that will be a much smoother smoother sorry much smoother process of getting them on board and signing them up you're not trying to convince them of a problem that they may not actually have have and in my opinion um if you are a coach then it's a more ethical way of marketing as a coach um, because at the end of the day you're there to serve your clients and uh, not to push your programs or services. It's you're there to fit to help your clients uh, to achieve the things that they want to achieve. Um, so once you have the right services in place, um, once you've got a better idea of the issues that your clients have, then your marketing messages, the content that you put out on social media, the things that you write down on your website. Um, and even the way that you develop it all uh, and um, you know, things like the user journey, things like that, um, it will be more suited to your clients and your clients will have a better understanding that you can help fix their, or not fix, but you can help, you can help them with the issues that they have um, with achieving their goals. Okay, so the first phase of marketing is really doing research or market research for your coaching business. You know, is the thing that you're trying to offer right now, is it really relevant to what people want or need for the people that you want to help? Okay, so do your research, okay? And when you've done that, like I said, you'll have a better idea uh, of how you can get your message across to people. You'll be able to better word it to uh, appeal to the right people. Um, knowing the issues that they have. Um, so when you know you've got a good idea for a coaching program, then it's time to let people know about it and get your message across. You could develop the world's greatest program that anybody has ever seen that fixes every single issue in the world. But if nobody knows about it, then what good is it? If nobody knows that that service exists, then what good is it to the people that you want to help? You need to let people know about your services um, and you've got to get that across. So another key aspect of marketing is working out how to get your message to the right people who will read or listen and pay attention to it um, because these are the people who you can help and you want to reach as many of these people as possible. Now, far too many people have this, what's called like a scattergun approach, where they're not really aiming with their message. They're just kind of like throwing messages out on social media. They're putting it on their page, their profile, they're putting it out in groups. They're on Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook and maybe even Snapchat and TikTok these days. Um, and they're just trying to spread that message as far as wide as possible. And, you know, lots and lots of people may see that message, but really, you want the right people to see that message so that they pay attention and they come and listen to you. Um, again, by doing that, by by just that scattergun approach, it's not only time consuming, um, it's expensive. And the worst thing about it is that it's actually really, really exhausting. So you really need a better aim. So part of your market research was to get a deep, will be to get a deeper understanding of where your potential clients are. And what I mean by that is where they actually are, whether they physically hang out, if you're going to go and speak to them in person or where they are online, you know, so, you know, is your client on Facebook or is your client on Twitter or is your client on Instagram? Or are you just using Facebook when your clients are predominantly using Twitter, in which case you're never gonna reach your clients if you're not meeting them where they are, whether that's online or offline, okay? So to meet the right clients, you need to find out where they are and you need to be there as well, okay? And so that is phase two. So if you meet them, you can, whoops, if you meet them where they are, 
um, then you can start building awareness of your coaching business with your message. Okay, so once you've established that and you start actually reaching these people, um, you may wonder why you're actually reaching people and then you're offering your coaching services, but no one is actually booking with you or nobody's buying your programs. And building awareness of your coaches and services, and, uh, coaching services and programs, it doesn't mean people are going to buy from you straight away. You know, if they've never heard of you, um, they don't know who you are, do they fully trust you? They probably don't. They've, they've got no idea really if you can actually deliver um, what you say you can deliver through your coaching programs. So you may appeal to the potential clients and their issues and they may read your messages and take notice. So that's the first, first step. But this is where you've got to work out what proof that they have that you can really provide the solution that they seek. And again, this is where the next phase of marketing comes in and it's about building trust um, and you know, showing proof and evidence that you can actually deliver on what you say you can deliver. To build up trust, you need to be able to repeatedly communicate with your potential clients and de demonstrate that you really, really can help them. So what you need is a method to first attract your clients, which is in the awareness phase, but then you have to think about well, once you've attracted the clients, how are you going to then keep in touch with them without having to repeat that awareness phase, uh, trying to get back in touch with the same person again? Because once they've listened a little bit, they are potential clients, so you need some way of being able to keep in touch with them um, so you can provide that message uh, uh, and show, show them proof that you can actually deliver on what you say you can. Um, so this is where we kind of, we, we go into an audience building phase. Um, yeah, so you need to create an area where you can entice them to your communication methods, whether that's building an email list or whether that's using the Facebook group. And you entice them in there with some sort of value offer that doesn't cost anything. It's called a lead magnet. Um, they sign up for the lead magnet, they find out about the group, uh, they find out or they get onto your email list and they find out about your group, they might join your group. Um, but once you've got them on your email list or you've got them in your group or you've got them as a page following, you're more likely to be able to communicate with them on a more regular basis. And that's much easier for you. And it's better because you've got an audience that are more likely to listen to you as well. And then through your regular regular communications, you can nurture your potential client through ongoing value giving and showing proof from previous clients of results. Um, so when you go through programs, you can talk about the results that people got from programs in your group, in your emails that you send out to people. And this then builds up the trust and increases the chances of these existing people in your groups who haven't hired your service yet, um, it increases the potential for them then actually realizing that you do deliver on what you say you deliver and they may sign up for your coaching packages uh, or join us or, or buy your coaching programs, okay? So this is the third phase and it's called the nurture phase or building an audience phase, okay? Now, you might think that once you've nurtured your audience, you know, you've you've got people coming in and buying your services. You've got people coming in and buying your coaching programs. You might think that's great. You know, that's exactly what you want to happen. You want people to come and buy your products or you want people to come and buy your uh, programs um, and you want to give your services to them. You want to be the one that helps those people out. But it doesn't end here. OK, just because you've got them as a client now doesn't mean that you shouldn't end marketing to try and improve your services okay so what comes next after you've coached someone what comes next after you've delivered the program is feedback now when you've delivered a course a program you've delivered uh, a bunch of coaching sessions um you can then request for feedback so you might want to reach out to these people you might ask for feedback and it gives you two great um, feedback feedback is great for two reasons. The first one is great feedback provides you with great testimonials and proof of value that you need to share with your newer audience um, when they're going through the nurture phase in phase three. So as they're going through the nurture phase, they want to see proof that you deliver 
what you say you can deliver through your coaching programs and, and services. And that's where previous clients feedback and testimonials comes in to um, give that evidence that people need. The second benefit of feedback is that it highlights areas in your services or programs that can offer improvements. So you may de develop a program and it might, you know, certain parts of it might go really well, certain parts of it might go okay. And there may be one or two parts of your program that don't go so well, or they don't get the results that they want, or it's not delivered in a clear enough way. Maybe it confuses your clients and it's a lot of extra work to try and clarify that information. Um, what you want to do is go forward is then amend that program or amend your services so that that point that didn't quite go so well um, gets improved. So your next generation of clients that come through that program, they find it much easier. Um, it's much easier for you and they get better results and better results for them is better for you as well. OK, um, and there may be areas as well in your program that you don't realize um, has issues, but feedback from your clients will give you the, that feedback that you need as well. So you can start looking into things that you may not even realize is an issue and be able to then next time around you deliver that service, you deliver a much better service or program. OK. Um, and this is phase four, and this is the cycle. So, you know, once you've gone through the feedback cycle, um, you might want to do some research again, just to make sure that the, the clients that you have or the clients that you are reaching at the moment are the right clients. You might want to do some tweaking to your marketing um, and have to undertake some research there again. And you just continuously go through this cycle, okay? So if you're wondering how to get started with marketing for your coaching business, the first thing is, and this is what everybody looks for, people look for a one-for-all solution that tells them exactly what to do for their coaching business. Now, there is no proven blueprint to effective marketing for any singular coach out there. I'll tell you that now. There isn't anything that says, do this, do this, do this and you will get lots and lots of clients because every coach is different, every client is different, um, every service and program and niche that you're working with is going to be different and it's going to need different approaches as well. For example, you know, so many business people will tell you if you want to get more leads, do more lives. Now, if you're not comfortable doing lives or um, lives just really aren't your thing, then doing live video on social media all day, every day is really, really going to be draining and, and, and difficult for you. So when it comes to marketing, we need to approach it. Uh, we need to approach each, for each phase of the market. Uh, we need to approach each phase of the marketing cycle um, and consider how another coach would approach it as well. So every coach is going to be individually. And it's going to vary, like I said, it's going to vary on what you offer, how you offer it and who your clients are and also where they are as well. So again, if somebody says you've got to have Facebook groups to grow business these days, well, that's not true at all. There's plenty of businesses that don't use Facebook groups uh, that still manage to grow businesses. There's plenty of people that are just using LinkedIn and not Facebook to grow businesses. There's plenty of people using Facebook and not LinkedIn. So somebody says you've got to be on LinkedIn or somebody says you've got to be on Facebook, uh, Facebook, then, you know, it's, um, it's, it's completely, um, their opinion, really. It might've been what worked for them. It might've been what worked for their clients, where they found their clients and how they, um, built their audience. Um, but that doesn't mean it's going to be right for you. So you need to do that research. Um, when you're doing your research, there's plenty of information out there on the internet now. And especially when you do, you, you do look at things like Facebook groups, there's plenty of Facebook groups on very, very specific niches that you might be able to join and just find some information out through those groups. There's so much information where surveys and studies have already been done um, on particular niches that might be relevant to you. So go and find those surveys, look at the results um and some of those results will help you understand things better in your business as well the best way to get any um research is really to ask your own questions and get people to give you 
answers back. But that can be really, really difficult at the start, especially when you're just starting and you haven't really got an audience to answer your questions anyway, because, because what you want is an audience of ideal clients, but something you can start adding into the mix a little bit later on um, in your audience phase, whether that's in, like, like say a Facebook group, LinkedIn group, um, an email list or something like that. You can start adding surveys a little bit later on when that starts growing. But for now, there are plenty of, there's tons of research on the internet for so many different niches. And um, there's probably gonna be something that's relevant to your niche. So you can go and get data from there and information that will help you understand what people's problems are and how to find them as well. So you can meet them online or offline. <clears throat> um, yeah, so how you decide to build and nurture an audience will also differ from other coaches as well. So there's lots of people using the Facebook group method. I'm using the Facebook group method. Um, I've re identified that a lot of my clients are on Facebook and that they may benefit from a group like this. Um, so that's why I use Facebook groups, but that might not necessarily be right for you. If you're using LinkedIn primarily as a place to uh, find your clients, then a Facebook group is probably not going to be the best place for them. Um, they might be on both, in which case, you know, great, um, but they might not be. In fact, I saw on LinkedIn today an invite to uh, a group on, I think it was copywriting, and I looked at some of the comments in there, and the the link was in the first comments, and it was a Facebook group, um, and don't forget this was on LinkedIn. And one of the comments off somebody else was, I would join your group, if it wasn't on that platform. So some people aren't using that platform. Uh, some people aren't using the same platforms as you. You nearly need to use the platforms where your ideal clients are and then build an audience building method there. But one of the great things about email marketing is that you know most people online, well, in fact, I'd probably say all people online have access to an email address because they can't open up a platform without one. So building an email list is really, really beneficial because it's not stuck to a specific platform. So if you use two platforms, say you use Facebook and Twitter, then you can still build an email list. Um, and through that email list, you can reach people who may have missed your Facebook posts and the same for the people who may have missed your um, Twitter posts. Okay, so um, however you decide to build an audience is going to differ and it's going to be up to you as well. And that's up to you to work out and um, just work out where people are and how you can build an audience that you can that you control and you speak to on your terms. OK. Uh, just going away from online audiences. So you might run in-person events, probably not happening at the moment and it's probably died a death. But I know some coaches who run regular monthly in-person events and the regular people who turn up for the events that's their audience okay and that's those events are their opportunity to then uh, promote their services and things like that to them okay um, and that's when you will promote your services is when you've got a group of people who listen uh, so whichever route you take and de decide to take um, and whichever route is relevant to your client's needs uh, you must it must enable you to communicate your messages with your audience regularly, okay? So that's the point of Facebook groups, that's the point of email lists, that's the point of LinkedIn groups. Um, yeah, so one thing I will say is that marketing doesn't have to be complicated. Now it might seem complicated from the outset and it can be, you know, the research is probably gonna be one of your biggest phases to sort of really undertake um, and then, you know, later on when you've got a lot of data, you know, highly data-driven marketing can reap, reap some great rewards uh, through better targeting, better messages, and better understanding of the clients. But if you haven't got that data to begin with, then there's no point worrying about that. Just get, get simple um, and do some simple steps. Um, and plus the time that you've got available for your business as well, you know, you, you really want to make the most of your time. So you don't want to be digging into lots and lots of deep data to begin with. Uh, you just want something that's simple and consistent. Now, one of my coaches, uh, one of my previous coaches once gave me the formulas to success. And he said that simplicity plus consistency equals success. So keep your marketing simple, you know, stick to the four phases, keep it simple. 
and keep it consistent, which is something I need to do better. And then you will find that that leads to success. You know, I am a great believer in simplicity. So for your marketing, like 10 steps to think about. Number one, think about who you'd like to help, understand them deeply. Number two, do some research to find out their needs. Number three, find out where they hang out, whether that's online or offline. Number four, meet them there and spread your message. Number five, invite them to you with some uh, free value. So to get them into your into your group with something that's, that, 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 that offers value and it doesn't cost them a penny because there's no risk to them. Number six, keep messaging them with your value and proving your worth. So however you build that audience, keep sending out that message, uh, keep sharing the value, keep uh, sharing testimonials and feedback that you get from clients as well. Number seven, offer them your program that helps them with their issues, okay? So when you've got that audience built up, offer them your programs that helps them with their issues. After that, number eight, get feedback and testimonials. Number nine, share your testimonials. Uh, again, that comes back to the um, keep messaging, with, messaging them with your value, improving your worth section. Um, and number 10, implement improvements and keep the cycle going. Go back to number one and keep going. And in a nutshell, that's it really with marketing to get started with. Um, but by getting started with a very, very simplistic approach, uh, even with a very, very simple plan, you'll start a process. You'll, you'll start a process that will put you on a continuous path of progression. Now, many people don't have a, any plan at all, so a simple plan will really help you start to stand out above um, other coaches, especially new coaches. You will start to stand out above them as well. Okay. And then along the way on that journey, you'll adapt and improve. And this is eventually what's going to help your coaching business grow. You just got to keep on that cycle and it'll be like a snowball effect and it'll keep growing and growing. Okay. So that's quite, you know, it's quite a simple marketing introduction there really, but I hope it's given you some food for thought. Um, I am going to go into some detail, a little bit more detail on certain parts of the phases in the future. So look out for further videos. Um, but if you've got any questions at all, you know, like always, do come and ask in the group. Um, just put a post in the group and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. OK, so I've managed to keep that one under 30 minutes, um, mainly because I actually prepared some notes. So I didn't go off on a tangent this time. Uh, which I've got a real habit of doing. So that is an introduction to marketing and it's why marketing is really going to benefit your coaching business. Um, so if you haven't got any plan at all, then I suggest you get one together um, and you make a plan, especially when you start coming to actually make content and, and, and building your own website. You really, really need that plan in place, which is why um, I'm going to which is why I'm delivering this video tonight, okay? So get that plan in place. Again, doesn't have to be simple. Part of the cycle means you're going to improve on that plan over and over again. So get it in place. Um, and yeah, ask any questions and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.